Hey everybody, look who's back. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been summer and coaches are obviously busy and doing their thing and getting their teams ready. So definitely try to uh, try to not bug the coaches as much as uh, I try not to bug the coaches at all. But uh, certainly this time of year, these guys are very busy. And, and again, um, just glad to uh, fire up these videos again. And, and we're going to bring on a guy that, that I, I've been – blessed to know for a long time here. I've been doing this for a while, obviously, and so has he. And uh, again, just one of the one of the best guys you'll ever meet as far as coaches in IHSA football. Great family legacy uh, in, in his family for sure. And I'm bringing in Steve Winecki from Deerfield. And, you know, Steve, I usually see you out at Maine West or I see you somewhere this summer. I didn't get a chance to, but uh, man, it's good to see you. It's been a while. And um it sure seems like we're getting closer to what we used to call normal as far as Yeah, well, well, first of all, thank you for that very gracious introduction. I appreciate it. It's, uh, it's been a while. It's good to see you. We usually cross paths sometime in the summer. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like you said, it's, it's been, a, been a busy summer. It's been very, really like, truncated and there's just putting a lot of stuff in a short period of time. So um, I, I appreciate having some time to talk to you. So a lot of the talk in the early concern was, okay, so we're going to have this weird six-week spring season, and then we're going to have to turn around right away and, for the most part, right away and start getting ready for another football season. How have you approached that, Steve? Um, you certainly are, are a program that has multiple sport athletes, and you've had, for as long as I remember you coaching Deerfield, uh, right. how have you been able to manage that? Is it a concern in the back of your mind as far as, you know, getting your work in but not trying to overdo it while also allowing your multi-sport athletes to continue to be multi-sport? How have you managed it? Well, I think the, the first thing we did is when the um, spring season ended um, in uh, April, the end of April, we told our players, we don't want to see you for April and May, excuse me, for May and June go do your other sports. You know, we'll have lifting programs and all that, but we want you to go do your other things, do your other sports, get away from us. Cause we're doing stuff. As we talked about last year, we're doing stuff all during the pandemic and not just the players, the coaches. So it was real important that they took some time off, got away. And we kind of used the, our spring season, almost like spring ball. So when we started our camp back in July, it was almost like we picked up like right after the week we played Glenbrook North, we just kind of jumped back into it. And it, it was very refreshing for our kids. It was refreshing for the coaches. So, so far, you know, everybody's been healthy. Knock on wood. It's been going really well. Um, do, do people realize you mentioned your assistant coaches, and this is something I've had discussions with other head coaches as well. You know, every year your assistant coaches make sacrifices, but but do people and most people even realize and recognize what a lot of these assistant coaches on your staff and others had to deal with during this pandemic? I mean, just all of a sudden we're throwing a new season at them. I know a lot of these assistant coaches coach other sports and just talk about just just dealing with that and and people just not understanding what these guys really had to put up with. Right. It was, it, it, that was the challenge because we have um, three of our three coaches on the football staff coach baseball. So they were one day they'd be at football next day They'd be at baseball. We were working. Um, we'd play on Friday nights and then they would go coach their baseball on Saturday. And it was, it was tough, but you know, we're blessed with at Deerfield with his great assistants and more importantly, you know, great wives behind them, great families behind them that support them. And, I think that's very important too, is that I've, I've kind of evolved as a coach that I want to make sure that my assistants, you know, when they're at Deerfield, they're there, but when they're gone, I want them to be with their families. Yeah. We've moved, I've moved away from having Sunday meetings with the staff because, you know, with huddle and everything, we could do things remotely. And we were doing that even before the pandemic is that, you know, and I think that's why we get a lot, our assistants at Deerfield, they put a lot of time and they appreciate it because I, I want them to have that family time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, you know, and, and that was a feedback I've gotten from a lot of other head coaches that it's, it's been, it's been a lot to juggle, but you know, again, just the unsung heroes without a doubt, those assistant sure. coaches that keep things rolling. Um, 
I mean, the last couple of years, your program's on a roll, Steve. I mean, you come off of 19, you, you make it to the semifinals. Last spring, you go five and one, and you got to feel good about what you got coming back again for this fall. It, it, we're excited. You're right. The last couple of seasons have been, have been fantastic, and our culture has had a chance to just continue to build and get better. And those kids that were sophomores on that uh, semifinal team, a lot of kids that played are seniors this year. And it just, you know, success, you know, breeds success. And we're having one, we have one of the um, largest freshman classes playing football in probably the last 15, 20 years at Deerfield High School. Mm-hmm. And our program, you start looking at other programs that are either stagnant or declining. Our, our numbers are growing at Deerfield. Wow. And, and it's because of, you know, it's because of success, but it's also because of the great experience that the kids are having. So they see, and moms and dads are talking about, hey, this is a great thing. You need to do this. So um, it, it, it's been good. But now the thing is, we just got to keep it rolling. It's, it, it's easy. I shouldn't say it's easy. Once you get there, that's great. But now when that target's more on your back and things, we have to sustain it. Yeah. We have to work on sustaining it. Um, before we get into this year's team and we'll, we'll get into some personnel I definitely want to talk about that you've got coming back. What did you learn from the pandemic? And I, and I know that's a really vague question, but you know, you're a guy that you, you learn from experience and, and that's how you get better and improve. I mean, were there takeaways from the spring season, whether on the field, off the field, your approach, what were the lessons that hopefully you were able to take away from this entire spring and pandemic? Um, well, the first one, I don't know if it, it just really reiterated with me how important it is to be connected with kids, to how, to know what's going on in their lives, to make sure you're meeting with them because they're, st- they're kids. You know, we, we talk about, we see them playing on the field and how exciting it is, but they're 16, 17 year, 18 year old kids and stay connected with them and make sure their social, emotional health is good and make sure that they're, they're tuned. You know, they, they have somebody in their lives. And then football wise, it really, I went back to, you know, something you talk about with my uh, football legacy, something that um, my dad taught me was, you know, the kiss theory, you know, keep it simple, stupid, <laughs> just keep football simple yeah. on defense, run to the ball and tackle on offense, block, control the ball. And don't put too, since our time was limited, we started stripping away stuff and we played better. And I think that's the big one is just learning to be how to be a more efficient coaching staff. And and let's face it, because of the circumstances, you had to. You almost had to go right. back to basics with the limited amount of time you had with your team to prepare. I mean, I think the teams that didn't or weren't able to do that probably didn't have much success. And again, that, that's a tribute to you and your staff to be able to figure that out. And 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 you're right, it's it's amazing how you go back, you mentioned your dad and, and, and all, all the great teams he was involved with and coached. And I, I guess, I guess the point I'm trying to make, Steve, you're always learning. You're always oh, yeah. up and, and, and trying to get better. <clears throat> Excuse me. And no matter how, what a terrible situation the pandemic was and how that affected so many hundreds of millions of people, you need to have that mindset that you're going to get something positive out of it, that you're going to get something where you're going to get better out of this. And you know, so I'd, I'd say that'd be the two things there. So 22 years head coach at Deerfield, correct? Yep. I've got you at 126 and 89 overall. That That's pretty close. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll go a few wins, lots, no. whatever way you want to go. No, no, that's. Um, it's, it's, and the reason I ask this is because we, we've already seen it after the spring season. Um, you know, you've got a good amount of experience and a good amount of time in Deerfield. Um, Steve, a lot of guys in your position from a 10 year standpoint and everything else, a lot of guys backed out after this, after this going, having to go through this ordeal. Right. Did that ever cross your mind? Is it something that maybe you looked at your coaching career and, you know, wow, this has really changed my priorities and, and, and maybe maybe this is going to end earlier than I thought originally or fill us in because you're a guy that's certainly in that range where I can see you definitely taking a little bit harder look at a thought maybe now that you would have never thought would have come up as far as, you know, seeing the, let's say the end of, of, the, of a great coaching career. 
Well, is that on your mind at all or no, because of that? No, sure. I mean, it, this year was tough, but I, and, and you get to those times in the middle where you, it, it starts, it really wears on you. But I, I forget where the quote comes from, though, is that people burn out because they forget why they're doing it. And I, I felt that coaches were so much in need during the pandemic, and we were so yeah. important for, the, for these kids. And I, that's what keeps me, you know, that keeps me energized, is that there's kids out there, be it at Deerfield, be it at Oak Park River Forest, be it, you know, anywhere you can think of. They need coaches. And that keeps me going. Now, I, I am getting, you know, one thing, you know, to be honest with you, my mortality, it, it's, you know, you're talking about your teaching and coaching mortality. I'm, you know, I'm a couple of years away from retiring from Deerfield. Right. And I'm, you know, I'm at that age where I'm going to be, I'm going to be walking out the door at Deerfield. So, so that is having that mortality, mortality in, in, um, in your teaching career. But I, I, it gets me to appreciate every day. And, you know, it's because I, because I don't want to get to that spot and we're like, oh, I really miss that. I want to be like, I'm, I'm in it. And, you know, I want to be, you know, I want to be in it for the kid, but it's hard. It's hard. Especially if you have a young, and I think that you have a young family. It's really, really tough. You got young kids, you're, you're you know, you're missing this, you're, you're missing that event. It, it's tough. And that's why we're going back to what we said at the beginning with the assistants. I, I think it's so important that head coaches take care of their assistants. Yeah. So that they then, because those assistants are the ones that get the real close relationship with the players. They're their position coaches. They're the ones. And if your assistants aren't in a good spot mentally, you know, it, it, it's it, you're no good for anybody. Well, we talk about legacies. You come from a coaching legacy. Your family, a couple generations that have been through this. Your family knows the routine. Your wife knows the routine. Everybody knows the routine. Um, but are we seeing the end of the? multi-year coach is it coming to an end it's getting tougher it sure I don't like it's coming to the end yeah i don't know if it's coming to the end but it's, it's harder to do it's it's getting it's getting tougher to do and it, it's going to take a special breed of cat to be able to hang for 20 plus years at a spot and so i i, I i'm not saying i'm a dinosaur but i'm definitely you know i'm more the exception than the rule yeah yeah, for sure. And uh, welcome to the Dinosaur Club, by the way. So <laughs> you're not you're not alone. Trust me. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm covering I'm covering kids of kids I used to cover, Steve. So well, listen, I re I remember back in uh, 2003 when you were really starting first start rolling and you were coming up um, to Deerfield. So and that was like my my fourth year as head coach. So. Yeah. We have we have we're on a pretty similar timeline when it comes to <laughs> high school football. Yeah, yeah. There, there, there's no doubt about it. There, there's no doubt about it for sure. Um, I, I mean, recruiting is always ever changing. It's always involved, and there's new aspects of it. But I'm gonna be honest, Steve. This is maybe like everything else. This has been the hardest year or two, I think, recruiting wise. And I'm sure that's something you can relate to where. And the reason I bring this up with, with you is because you're a guy that when I talk to college coaches, they enjoy coming into Deerfield and talking to you. They really do. Nice. Thank and, you. And I think, I think that is so important. And I can tell you firsthand, and Steve would never admit this, but a lot of these coaches will talk more than just Deerfield kids with Steve. They'll talk about his opponents and, and kids that Steve likes. And Steve will tell them about kids that they play and say, hey, this kid's really good. That kid's really good. And again, Steve, that's a credit to you because, you know, that's what good coaches do. But the point I'm make, trying to make is it was so much easier for these college coaches when they were able to get into school and to be able to learn more about kids. We took that whole thing away from them and from you. And, you know, I, I mean, I've talked about how I think the fact that we miss playing fall football killed the recruiting class here, just killed it. It, it, it did not. And obviously for the uh, 2021 class, but I think for 2022, yep. it's hurting them too, because especially you get some kids that are, are late bloomers, then they didn't, you know, they're, you know, they've, they're coming on now, but they didn't have a chance to camp or they, when they did camp when they were younger, they were not as mature as other kids. So I, I, I think, you know, I think recruiting right now anyways, hurts the late bloomer, the way the system is right, right. now. 
but that's another that's another discussion. But it, it made it worse. The situation right now made it worse. So, so how how hard has it been for you? I mean, obviously your twenty twos are seniors now, but your twenty ones just to find a home for these kids. And we're not we're not talking scholarship. We're just talk, trying to find opportunities for your kids. Even that has become so much different. So how difficult was that for you? You just had to keep you had to keep beating the bushes and you know kind of what you said at the beginning of this this part that's why you have good you know why you have great relationships with college coaches yeah. so you can get on the phone and say hey you got a spot this kid can play you know this kid's been overlooked and and like you said do you know do it for other kids it's you know when you, one kid has success at Glenbrook North you know coming out then it's good it's good for the entire state so you just got to you know and besides I like sitting down with coaches and talking ball. Yeah. But be, but besides that, it's just it's good to have those relationships where you can then pick that phone up and say, "Hey, take a look at this kid." Yeah, it's um, and I think unfortunately, Steve, because of you know, we can talk about the transfer portal, the impact that had, the extra COVID year that college players received. Right. You know, people don't realize. I think that that COVID year is going to be a four year cycle before that gets out of the system. Meaning that is going to take scholarship and opportunities away for the next four years in class. I, 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 you hit it on the head. That that's the one that people don't realize right. is that having those, a kid that can get an extra year and end up taking a scholarship spot. And if that kid wants to stay wherever and then go to the transfer portal, you'll have a 22, 23 year old kid competing with an 18, 19 year old kid. And if you're in a program that you want to win right now, which everybody is in college, it, it's going to hurt that class. So I, I think what you said is right. It's going to it's going to take four or five years for this to shake out. Yeah. And um, what and, and you talk with kids and you talk to your parents and get your kids prepared for the process. Um, what do parents need to know? What what are they missing or what are you seeing that you would like to see more often? Now, I would mention academics, but. You're fortunate. You're in a great school district, and a lot of your kids that come out of that program are really strong academically. What is, but it, maybe that is it. But what area well, or two that maybe the parents and your, your the prospects out there can focus on to better their chances? Well, I, the one I would say is you got to remember it's a marathon, not a sprint. That what's you know that it might not happen right away, and you just need to keep getting yourself out there and keep getting video out there, having your head coach help you get video out there and don't be afraid of saturating the market. And, and, and also be ready to be told, Hey, maybe not this year, this is not a good fit for you, but there is going to be a place for you to play football if you want to play football. But I always tell my players at the very end, you better make sure that wherever you're going to go to play, if you never play another down of football, are you going to be happy there? And you have to, you have to go in with that mindset. But I would say the big, the biggest piece of advice would be, be patient. It take just it's because you you know like I just said is that you get kids that are getting offers at you know, you know if they're soft you know freshmen and sophomores. If you're a late bloomer, it's frustrating. But there's going to be a place for you. Yeah. And if you, you need to get a good fit and then that's what I'll say is like, this, I know this coach, he's going to take care of you. Give us some time. Awesome. Um, let's get into your team for 2021. Uh, I mean, 14 returning starters, eight on offense. That's uh, one heck of a place to start, Steve. It is. We're going to um, offensively, we, you know, you know, we're bringing a lot of kids back. Um, you know, it's starting off in people that pay attention to what you put out. We have uh, receiver Luke Jones, running back Luke Woodson, um, those dynamite football players that'll be on that, that side of the ball. We're going to have our quarterback coming back, Austin Layette, who um, played, you know, as a junior and has really, um, has really grown and matured and gotten stronger. We're going to have three offensive linemen coming back. It's, um, it's going to be an exciting time offensively. And then this is our, now our third, our third season. It's, you know, with you take COVID our third season with new offensive coordinator and new offensive system. And our kids are really, are really getting it. So um, I, I'm, ex I'm excited about what we have on the offensive side of the ball. Um, and you mentioned the Lukes. 
uh, Woodson and Jones. And I got to imagine, I know Luke was, uh, I want to say, full, both ways starter. Is Luke Woodson full-time starter both ways as well for you as a sophomore? Yeah, you. Um, as a sophomore, he started at uh, linebacker and he played running back. Okay. Um, last year, he was a full-time he was a full-time um, starter and, you know, he, he never wants to come off the field. Heck he holds for PAT field. Goals. My dad gets so mad at me. He's like, try to find this guy a break. <laughs> like I, I try him, but the kid doesn't want to come off the field. Yeah. Um, he's one of those kids. And I don't know if we have a football term for it, but he's kind of the gym rat when it comes to football, isn't he? He is. He's, Woods, yeah. He, he, he's very much a gym rat. He's, you know, he's a kid that could be a great coach. When you know if, if that's the direction he wants to go in, he he knows our offense, especially our defense, as well as our coaches. He gets kids in the right position. He he has a tremendous football IQ, and he's got and you know you've seen it, Tim. He's got he, he's just got that it where he gets yeah. out and he just he just competes. And the same thing on the basketball court, he just has it. Luke Jones, uh, another kid, obviously his older brother ended up going to Iowa, walks on at Iowa, has tremendous success up there. Um, I see a lot of the same thing out of Luke Jones. I mean, Steve, he's wiry, he's explosive. And I tell you what, he uh, he's a kid that I, I think a lot of people are missing on right now. I really do. I I would agree. And he, he he's a kid that is, you know, he just makes plays all over the place. He's going to, He'll be again a two-way starter for us. We're going to move him around a ton on offense to make sure he gets the ball. He'll he return, you know, he returns kicks. He's just he's another kid that is just all over the place, and he's going to make plays. And you're right, he's he's a lot like his brother, and he, he's a kid that you people are missing the boat on. He's getting some more sniffs now, but um, he you know after he has a fantastic senior year, he, he yeah. he's got a great future. Yeah, and he knows, and Luke and I have talked, he's a kid that another 10, 15 pounds look out, and, and you know it's coming. It's, he's going to put it on. It's just a matter of time, and I think once he does, that's when people are really going to start to take notice of him. Um, you know, the schedule, the usual cream puff that you have every year. I'm kidding. I'm joking. Uh, I really like I, – I don't know how you guys worked it out, but I really like you taking on Hinsdale South, just a very – very good program down in Darien. No, we're excited. And we talk about my coaching career. That was my first, my first head coaching game was down at Hinsdale South. And so we talk about things coming full circle. Now it wasn't a very good back then. I think Jim Kerwin was the head coach there and it didn't end up very well for Deerfield that game, but we're, we're excited because it's, it was one of those things that we were kind of um, putting feelers out after the 2019 season and it, it worked out and you know we're really excited to head down there it's a great program um been following them um you know a lot on social media i know they have a lineman who's pretty good yeah. um i saw that um you talk, you watched them a little bit at a seven on seven a couple weeks ago i think at lt they were good uh, yeah i mean we're, we're excited it's, it's going to be a great opportunity um the schedule you know i mean i mean the the conference itself always tough i mean you think of the main West and you think of Vernon, uh, uh, main West and um, like Vernon Hills is another in Highland park. And um, again, nothing easy. And, and I just think that, you know, having that experience on both sides of the ball, I, I got to imagine that just helps when your schedule's probably as strong as it's been in a while, just having those veterans will definitely pay off. Hopefully. It does. And then, um, it's going to pay off. And the nice thing that um, the CSL is done with the MSL, we have those two crossovers. Yeah, with the MSL. Love, it. love it. So before, before our conference, we're playing um, Rolling Meadows and Schaumburg, two also yep. strong programs. And it, it's going to, not only is it going to help us out for the conference, but then like one of the big things that helped us out in 2019, we had almost the same exact schedule. We had so many playoff points that helped us yep. get a number two seed. And that, you know, and that kind of propelled us going forward. So, Having that being battle tested, you know, a lot of coaches, especially with you got to get your five wins and all that stuff. I want to play good teams. Yeah. I, I want to find out. I don't want to have to, you know, have a cupcake schedule and then, then find out you're no good come week 10. Well, you've been, you've been that coach on the other side of that shoe as well, because I don't, I remember a year or two where you went five and four and didn't get in, didn't get in because of yeah. points. 
Yep. So that's got to be the worst feeling in the world. Yeah, especially when you kind of know it going, you're going into that last yeah. week and you're doing the math and you're like, I just don't think it's going to happen. And that's, and th those are the times when I said, we, we need to have tougher for first couple of games. We yeah. need to get teams there. We need to play those. And not it, just to get our. And it's yeah. always, it's always a crapshoot. You know that you can, you can go in <laughs> thinking, and I'm sure there's examples you, you can remember where you thought, hey, we're playing so and so. They're usually pretty good. They, you know, they're at least five, six wins a year, and then they post an offer for the year. I mean, I, I've seen it both ways. Well, it's, it, it, you know, we talked about that. we're still, you know, still dealing with kids, and there's very few programs that continually can just churn, will be churning it out. When you're dealing with high school kids, <coughs> you know, you're right. You don't know what you're going to get. I mean, it's the same thing with Deerfield. I mean. You know, but we want to, you know, our goal, like you said, is just to continue to have that level of success that we've been having. All right. Well, I never promise where I'm going on the schedule, but I have a feeling I'm going to try to work a Deerfield Warrior game into my plans for 2020. I, that would be fantastic. We'd love to see you. Make sure you got to now, now, if you're going to come up, I need, I do need a favor from you. Okay. You need to be a home game because our booster right. club has, we got ourselves a brand new spanking video board that, <laughs> that is awesome. up. It's, it, it's almost like we laugh. It's almost like something for Friday Night Life that Buddy Garrity bought for. It, it's perfect. It's, it's right up really so, Exactly. So if you come up, please make it a home game. We'll get oh, your face I, up on the big screen. And I will I will sell the heck out of that that video board. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> Nothing better than excess. I love it. That's it's right. The best. It's the best. <laughs> Steve, I appreciate it. Thanks for taking time. Wish you the best of luck. And uh yeah, I'm pretty confident I'm I'm gonna come see you this season. Feeling good. That's awesome. That. We we'd love to have you. Thanks for the time. We really appreciate it, Tim. All right, Steve Winecki from Deerfield joining us.